We're going to talk about a color strategy in which you can create something called intervals. And this is an, uh, a type of strategy in which you take two or more colors and you mix them together to create a gradient of colors. And then you use all of those colors in a design to come up with a unified composition. It's a way of composing with color that allows you to have variety but still maintain unity throughout the design. So we're going to talk about different types of intervals that you can create. Um, so in Illustrator, the first thing you'll want to do is set up your uh, templates. You can use the provided templates for this assignment or you can create your own. Over here I've just created by, uh, my own by grabbing the rectangle tool and then holding down shift or command on the Mac to draw a square and then I took my black arrow tool and held down alt or option key to click and drag to make a copy of that square and then what I did is I set up a blend so that the colors will mix together for me to create my interval so I went to object blend blend options and set up a color uh, blend of specified steps and I want to have five specified steps so you type in five and then hit OK then you grab the blend tool over here and click on the first square and then click on the second square to create your blend so now this sets up your blend of course we haven't actually used it yet because we haven't added any colors to it but this will this will um, blend your parent colors together, the parent colors being the starting color and the ending color. Then you need to make sure you label each of your charts. So you'll want to grab the type tool and then just click underneath to then type out the labels. This top one needs to be a warm analogous interval. And I'm going to actually just highlight the text and grab, go to the character palette to enlarge the text to make it a little bit bigger so that I can see it better. Okay, that's pretty good. When I'm done, I'm going to hit the black arrow tool and just kind of uh, use the black arrow tool to um, drag and move my text over. I'm actually hitting the arrow keys now just to line it up and position it properly. Uh, moving things around with the arrow keys allows you to move them one pixel at a time so that you can get precise positioning. Um, and the other thing you can do with, uh, for as far as positioning goes, is you can also play around with things such as rulers and guides. Um, those things are also helpful for lining things up. And then once you have your charts laid out like this, you're going to need to pick the colors. Now over here on the left, I have an additive color wheel that I have put over on the side as reference to use. Now notice that this additive color wheel is divided in half by a horizontal line. On the top of this are colors that we generally think of as warm and on the bottom are colors that we generally think of as cool. So warm versus cool is a distinction of hue. Warm versus cool describes the property of hue. Now keep in mind that warm versus cool does not describe the property of value or saturation. It's m it's only a descriptor of hue. Okay, so you have to look at the color wheel and recognize the different categories of color that are going to fall into these categories. So basically, uh, colors that are closest to red are warm. Colors that are closest to cyan are cool. So I'm using the additive color wheel here as a reference for how I'm going to fill in my charts. So the first one I need to create for is a warm analogous interval. Now I'm going to go over and grab the white arrow tool and I'm going to use that to select my first box. Now you have to make sure that you're using the white arrow tool to be able to do that called the direct selection tool um, because if you try to use the black arrow tool it won't work. You notice that if I use the black arrow tool it selects everything and I don't want to select everything I just want to select the first box. So you have to deselect everything first by clicking anywhere on the screen. Um, grab the white arrow tool and then click the first box to select just that first box. And I'm going to give it a warm color because we need to make this a warm analogous interval. So I'm going to use the eyedropper tool to select a warm color from the um, side of the color palette that's warm. So the color wheel that's warm. And um, now, I, now you don't want to keep the colors in their most saturated pure forms. You want to try to experiment with the value and the saturation of your color. So once you select a color, then click on it to open up the color palette. You can also find the color palette by going to Window, Color to open up the color palette. 
Um, if you double click on the color, you can open up the color picker and you can use this as well. So either way will work. But basically what you want to use are the saturation and the brightness sliders to adjust your color. So uh, if you don't see the HSB hue, saturation, and brightness sliders listed here, you'll want to click on the drop down menu and select HSB from this menu item. And then you can take this, once you have your square selected, it's easy enough to just slide these sliders around and this will actually change your color in a live fashion so that you can see how you're manipulating it. So we're going to change this orange color away from its uh, you know, from its uh, standard pure form on the color wheel so that we're using a slightly different variation in value and saturation of that color. Then we're going to select um, the ending parent color. So we selected the beginning parent color. Now we're selecting the ending parent color to create our interval. And so we need to select another warm color because this is a warm analogous interval. Analogous is when you, ch uh, the, the term analogous means basically uh, creating a s color strategy in which you choose two adjacent hues. So next, colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. So for example, I could choose yellow because this is next to the red, uh, or the orange that I selected, rather. So now I have a warm analogous interval between um, yellow and orange, and I can also adjust the value and the saturation of the, that yellow on the fly. So if I want to make it lighter or brighter or less saturated or more saturated, I can play around with those settings as well. Um, so you're going to continue in this way down to make all of your charts uh, a cool analogous interval, a good example of that would be, for example, cyan and blue. So I'm see how I'm using the white arrow tool to select the beginning square and then um, using the eyedropper tool to select the color that I want to put there and it will automatically place the color in that square. Alternatively, you can use the eyedropper tool to pick up the color you want to use and then click and drag to place the color into the square. That also works as well. So again, that's picking up the color with the eyedropper tool. Click and drag and release and it will put the color into that spot. Now this would not be, the, right here going from green to blue would not qualify as an analogous interval because green is not adjacent to blue on the color wheel. Instead to make it adjacent in order for it to qualify as analogous I would have to select uh, cyan for example if I wanted to use the green. And then you also, as I said before, do want to make sure that you adjust and play around with the value and the saturation of these colors. So for example with this green I'm not going to leave it just bright plain green. I'm actually going to adjust it a little bit to make it um, I think I want to make it a darker color. And for the cyan, I think I want to make it um, kind of a saturated grayish um, light color. Okay? So play around with the value of the saturation to get more variation and uh, make your colors uni unique. Warm to cool high key interval. For this one, you'll want to select a warm color to begin with. I'll select a magenta and then you want to place a cool color in the ending spot. So I'm going to grab the eyedropper tool and I'm going to choose kind of a blue-green and click and drag it to put it there. Now we want this to be high key, a high key interval. So we actually want to make these colors high key, which is basically means light value, right? So we want to adjust these colors. So we're going to come over to the hue, saturation, and brightness sliders and I'm going to slide this brightness slider, the saturation slider up to um, make this color more high key. And same thing with uh, my blue-green. I'm going to adjust it as well. Keep it within the high key range, though I might make it less saturated, a little less bright than the other. So there's a little bit of contrast. And then warm to cool low key interval. Um, again, you would choose a warm color for one side. And then for the other side, you would choose a cool color. I'll go ahead and go with uh, green. Click and drag that in. And again, we need to make this a low key interval. So we need to take one of these colors and reduce the value, 
make it darker, add black to it to make it a much darker color. And just play around with the colors until you're satisfied with the with the, the contrast and the range of values that you have. And um, notice also how the colors are mixing together and um, creating the intervals. Because basically, you're going to use these charts for the following assignment to create your designs.